this is the start of the layout for the actual location of what is going to be the shop. Going from this corner right here down to where he's at. So we're working it laying out so we can get the ground prepped. And back. So basically as soon as we purchased this property, we knew that another thing that we were going to need to do was create a shop area mostly for Clay's tools. Obviously the tiny house only has so much space inside it and most of my projects require things like trees and garden space and camera gear and the ability to walk around outside and most of Clay's projects require using tools and things and having a place to put them was important. So last fall we got this shop pad all laid out and ready to roll. So I got to learn about how you make a building square. First you measure off your various sides and then to make it square you have to do the math for what the triangle side of that rectangle would be, which is something I learned how to do in school, but nobody ever told me what you might actually use it for, and I've never used that in the real world until today. Burley being a good listening puppy when he was told to stay away from the backhoe because he thought that the, uh, the bucket scoop looked fun to chase, but he's being very good. This is the start of the pad for where the shop barn is going to go. And we are off to finish planting some of the fruit trees since we can't be really of any use with this operation at the moment. So what Clay's doing is scooping off all the topsoil and occasionally picking the random rock you find under there. Most of it does not have rocks in it, and it's beautiful. Anyway, scooping the topsoil out of the way, where the pad is going to go, this pile of topsoil became the foundation of the garden beds that I filled this spring. They were all filled with that same topsoil that was scooped last fall out of this pad building site. So. None of this, of course, is going to waste, and the parts not used in my garden are uh, going to be used for planting other things. As you can see, there's some beautiful deep topsoil, and you can also see it was super dry. We had a very dry <laughs> summer and fall, and it was extremely dusty. So we got this whole pad ready, we being mostly clay, with a little assistance from me last, you know, September into October, and it would have been lovely to get something built that fall. Um, he knew with his schedule and such that there was no way he was going to actually have the time to do the building himself, which is something he has the, the skills and ability to do, just not the time at the moment, at least to get a shell up. And I thought, I agreed very much that it was going to make more sense to get some crew who does this all day every day to show up and at least, you know, put up a shell in a couple days rather than me trying to help him hoist, you know, um, trusses 14 feet in the air and so on with just the two of us. Any interior finishing and all that kind of stuff he could do later, but we thought it'd be very nice to have a crew show up to do the initial part. So we called around got a semi-local crew, the, the localist to us we could find, and got on their schedule, but they were all booked for the fall, and the first available slots they had were in the middle of winter.
After getting all that topsoil scooped out of the, the building pad, we moved it all over to this nice uh, pit area <laughs> that was there when we brought the property. And this is where people have been having burn piles and such. So that was a convenient place that we already couldn't do much else in at the moment to store it all until, like I said, we used a bunch of it this spring to fill the garden beds. So we got all that moved out of the way and ready for the next step. The next step being to fill up that space with pit run, which is just the standard material that comes out of a, a gravel pit or wherever they're digging rocks. So it's got some big ones, some medium ones, some little ones, some clay and dirt in between, but it makes a very solid base. So this is going to create the base of the shop. And got a local fella to haul quite a few loads in. This is load number one. And then as the loads for that, of that material showed up, they were able to spread it out into the base of the, the shop pad there, smooth it all around, and get it all ready to roll. And as you can see, more than one load was required. There's two more trucks coming in back to back. I think we ended up putting 16 loads of uh, pit run into there to level it all out, make it solid, because the topsoil was fairly deep there. Uh, well, it is on the whole property, but topsoil being fairly deep, meant there was a good bit of it to move and then that space to refill. So that's what's going on here. So we're getting this all ready, and at this point we're on the shop builder's schedule. Since our turn would have come up mid-winter, somewhere in February, due to the snow in our area, we requested that they just bump other people in front of us at that point, until we called and said the snow was melted in the spring. So we wanted this all to be ready, so as soon as the snow did melt, we could get this up and going. 
because, as you can see from a past video already, we wanted to use it for things like having little chicks arrive in the spring. And the last couple loads are actually gravel, not pit run. And after getting the, the pit run, the lumpy bumpy stuff all packed down and smoothed out as much as you can, then he spread all of the, you know, gravel on top of that and smoothed that around till it became a really nice solid base to start building a shop on. Leveling off the, uh, the first run on the grade of the gravel over top of the pit run. Getting ready to have a shed. with a beautiful burly who wants attention, which means that he's bumping my camera hand. And then I got to learn something about using survey equipment as I helped uh, get the, the grade to have a finished level grade to start the building on. The other thing I found amazing was that all these projects that that he, Clay was involved in. I was, you know, there at the property quite a few more days. Like I mentioned, Burley and I camped down there anytime we could, you know, working on the things we could do. I think all last year, um, he only had like 11 weekend days total free after we purchased this place. So all these projects he was involved in, he made happen in those 11 days. And some of them were awfully long days where we'd be up at the crack of dawn to drive there before the dawn cracked to drive there work all day and get home very late well after dark but we did get a good many things done last fall for which i'm very thankful Just finishing leveling off the gravel pad over there. The sprinkler in the foreground is just making the topsoil pile wet because we need to scoop some of it around and it's so incredibly dusty. So that's not watering anything that needs to grow, just trying to lay down the dust. And we've still got our pile of mostly dead fence posts and stuff. And look at that beautifully level gravel pad that is going to have a shop on it. And then it was winter, and there wasn't much to do other than try to wait patiently for the snow to melt again so all of the projects could restart in the spring. And one of the things we were really excited about was having that shop shell go up the minute the snow was gone, because we were counting on that for a whole lot of things that were going to go on in the spring. And so hopefully, you know, the plan was for that to go up the minute the snow was melted enough for that to happen. Hi over here at Finest. Thank you so much for watching these videos and spending some of your very valuable time choosing to do that. We hope you found something that was useful, educational, helpful, maybe save someone else some time and trouble, or just something just plain beautiful. If you don't want to miss any videos, subscribe and hit the bell. And thanks for coming along on our journey as we build a new little homestead with our tiny house and everything to come.